This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to the climate crisis. Dozens were arrested Monday outside President Biden's campaign headquarters in Delaware as members of Sunrise Movement called on him to declare a climate emergency. Some held signs that read, Fund Climate, Not Genocide. This comes as world-renowned climate scientist Michael Mann has been awarded more than a million dollars in a defamation lawsuit settled last week. Mann initially filed the case in 2012 against two right-wing critics. Rand Simberg, then with the Competitive Enterprise Institute, wrote that, quote, Mann could be said to be the Jerry Sandusky of climate science, except for instead of molesting children, he's molested and tortured data, unquote. Of course, Sandusky is the convicted child molester and former football coach at Penn State University, where Mann was a professor at the time. Mark Stein, a contributor to National Review, cited Simberg and called Mann's research, quote, fraudulent. Dr. Mann said he hopes the unanimous verdict in his defamation case against the two makes it clear that falsely attacking climate scientists is not protected speech. He's joining us now from Philadelphia, where he's the Presidential Distinguished Professor of Earth and Environmental Science at the University of Pennsylvania. Professor Mann, welcome back to Democracy Now! Uh, can you explain what just happened in this major victory being awarded a million dollars by a Washington, D.C. jury after suing these two right right-wing climate deniers. Yeah, thanks, Amy. It's good to be with you. Um, you know, as you quoted me before, um, this is a line in the sand. It's one thing to disagree with the findings of scientists. Um, you know, people have the right to do that. Uh, it's one thing to criticize scientists. And uh, within the scientific community, um, good faith criticism, skepticism is a good thing. But What's not allowed, what you can't do, is make false allegations about scientists in an effort, uh, of course, to promote uh, an agenda, an agenda in this case of climate change denialism. Um, and this is something that we've encountered for decades, efforts by the fossil fuel industry and their hired guns to attack and attempt to discredit scientists uh, to prevent meaningful action on climate. And so this is a line in the sand, and I think it goes beyond climate science. I think it also applies to other areas, uh, public health science. Uh, today we see uh, bad faith attacks on you know, public health scientists like uh, Anthony Fauci, um, my good friend Peter Hotez. Uh, that is not protected speech. You can't engage in false and defamatory attacks on scientists. And so I like to think that this will create some space now, that scientists will feel uh, more uh, comfortable in leaving the laboratory uh, and speaking to the public and policymakers uh, about their science and about the implications of their science, knowing that there are some basic protections. And I, I wanted to ask you, in your conversations with fellow scientists, uh, what is the, uh, the the mood or the sense of how these attacks are affecting their ability to do their work? Well, you know, um, especially young scientists, what I fear is young scientists see these very visible attacks, um, uh, these denunciations of, uh, of, of uh, their fellow scientists in the public sphere. And that sort of chills the public discourse. Um, uh, it, it makes them basically afraid um, to, to speak out and, and to speak up. And so I, I do think that uh, these attacks have had a chilling effect. And that was their intended impact. Of course, the climate change disinformation machine has used vilification um, as a way to intimidate scientists um, to, uh, again, to sort of, uh, you know, uh, to to create fear uh, that um, that they'll be attacked if, if they speak out about the implications of their science. Uh, that's been going on for far too long. It's now infected our entire body politic, where today uh, misinformation and disinformation runs rampant. Um, and when it comes to the great challenges we face, whether it be climate change or the public health threat of pandemics like COVID-19, it is absolutely essential that scientists uh, feel free to speak uh, to the public and to policymakers about these mounting threats. And I hope, once again, that this decision 
will create a little bit more space now for my fellow scientists to do that. And do you see your case setting precedent for political leaders who attack climate science, uh, to attack climate science? And how badly were you injured? I mean, this horror of comparing you to this known molester who destroyed so many young men's lives at, at uh, Penn State. Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, I was certainly there was a, an emotional toll uh, that it took uh, on me for certain. Um, you know, it, it it didn't prevent me from speaking out uh, about uh, the climate crisis. I have embraced uh, that opportunity. Uh, my recent book, uh, Our Fragile Moment, um, is my latest attempt to communicate the the What's threat of climate change to the public and to okay, policymakers. I've been able to do that. But um, but at the same time, it's taken an emotional toll, um, and uh, it, once again has sort of, uh, uh, sort of created this chilling effect, where other scientists, seeing me attacked in this way, have probably backed off um, and have shied away from the spotlight. Um, and we all pay the price when scientists don't feel um, empowered to speak out about the implications of their science.